All right, everybody, welcome back to the Power Comics YouTube channel. I am Evan Husney, uh, joined, of course, by our power celebrity here, our power creator, Mr. Steve McArdle. Uh, welcome back. How's it going, man? Going fantastic. Yeah, going man. Fantastic. Thanks. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming back. Of course, Steve McArdle is the creator, artist, writer, all around master of uh, Vendetta Holy Vindicator and also Artillery the book that we're going to be talking about today. Um, but just a little plug, Steve, before we get rolling here, because I think it's apropos, uh, we got to talk about your first trade paperback, the Vendetta Holy Vindicator trade paperback that we published. Uh, there it is. Oh, in in some Mylar even. Uh, <laughs> we published uh, along with uh, Floating World Comics and collaborated heavily with you. Of course, could have done this without you, obviously. Duh. Um, but here it is, man. People are starting to receive their copies um, from direct from Floating World. I think uh, there's been a uh, minor delay getting them out to stores, but I think by the end of the month, stores should be receiving them. Everybody should be receiving them. But um, I wanted to ask you straight off the top, man, what's it like seeing the react? Like, what's the reaction been to these books getting uh, you know out there in the market finally? It's It's been a little like slow trickling in because it you know people are getting them one here and one there and I'm, I'm hearing messages from people but it's been fantastic everyone loves the book it, i'm super proud of it you i you and me and jason you know we put a lot of time and work into this book um i couldn't be happier with how it came out yeah it um, looks looks amazing i think the book plate versions went, went out first Yes, so I think those people receive those first. That's right. And now other people are getting their orders filled in. So if you ordered a copy, thank you. It should be coming in the mail soon. And then hopefully within a few weeks, uh, should be in the, all the comic shops. Yeah, that's right. I, from what I understand, a lot of the um, anything in, in the printed world of things, you know, printing comics overseas, there's been some delays since the pandemic and things are kind of up in the air as they fluctuate uh, overseas. But copies are making it over here and so now they'll be out to all of you but you mentioned the book plate version i'm glad you did because i did want to also plug that that is available right now for everybody uh on uh floating world comics website you can get it um for just 40 bucks um and it comes obviously with the 160 page uh vendetta trade paperback but also you get the limited edition signed and numbered uh book plate signed by yourself steve and uh it's just awesome so that these are available to order now um, and then, of course, if you want to just get the regular edition, you can also order that without the book plate. But we highly recommend getting the limited edition signed version, of course. But all that's available right now on floatingworldcomics.com. So I suggest you get your copy if you haven't already. Um, all right, Steve, uh, should we talk about what we're here to talk about? <laughs> sure. Sounds okay. good. Okay. All right. So within the Vendetta Holy Vindicator trade paperback lies... Uh, there's issues one through four of Vendetta, but also there is your spinoff issue of um, Artillery, uh, which is a one shot, which I love how you've uh, incorporated that here <laughs> onto the comic as well. But that's sort of the standalone uh, issue uh, of this other B character you sort of had in Vendetta, um, this character Artillery. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, the first ever exposure I had to Red Bullet Comics, the first ever work of yours that I ever saw was this cover uh, that I saw probably low-res JPEG out there on the internet, but this is the first thing I saw. I had no idea there was this whole other universe out there. So that's the oh. first thing I ever saw. Yeah. Okay. See, I love hearing people's origin story, like how they found it or discovered it. And, you know, like some people found one in, like, in the back of a, bit, a discount bin or something maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I just remember when I first saw this, I was like, I need this. I don't know where I was searching through all of the online, you know, secondhand e-tailers, eBay, no copies could be found. And um, it really wasn't until Jeff Miller came along, who's a friend of the channel, and Jeff Miller was in contact with you. He somehow got your information and then um, and, and was able to hook me up with it. And then I saw all the other issues, you know, that are throughout this lovely book. And I just had no idea it was part of a broader universe. But um, this is my, yeah, this is where it all started for me was uh, the artillery one shot, if you will. <laughs> it's killer. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really proud of this book. You know, this is probably my favorite standalone single issue. 
because it's you know like a one a one and done story. Yeah, uh, I, I I I spent a long time on this. Um, I pretty sure I, I printed this one myself. I, I can remember the paper stock. Yeah, and this I think there's 500 copies total out there. Wow, 500. Oh. Wow, wow, that's yeah, small. So there's, not a, there's not a lot of them. Wow. You know. Wow. So yeah, I feel very blessed to have one of these. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, artillery one. Yeah, I was so excited when I finally got this. Obviously, looking at the cover art, it was like holy shit. Yes, everything that we do here and more. And so it was a uh, it was it was it was a great day here at the power offices when we finally got it. Um, and uh, so this is what 1993. Is that what we're talking here? Do you remember? Should we, should we, should we crack it open? 95. 95. Oh, so it's later than I thought. Wow. Yeah, uh, Vendetta 1 was 93. Ah, there we go. Um, number 2 and 3 was 94, maybe. In there, yeah. And But I got all, the whole Vendetta. See, I was trying to publish quarterly. Right. It took a little bit longer, but I managed <laughs> to get all four issues of Vendetta out, plus the trading cards, do the model kit, all that stuff, within two years, plus put this together. Yeah, anything that you and that's a very important point because in the inside of the vendetta issues, you sort of lay out your master plan. You say, "I'm this is a four issue limited series plus we're going to do a spin-off." And then of course, anything else you put in the book, if it was the model, uh, the amazing model kit, if you put in trading cards whatever, you always delivered what you promised. So, that's something I'm interested in. This was always so this this I should say the whole series was always meant to be four issues of Vendetta, one artillery. Is yeah. that right? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I kind of waited to see the reaction on artillery after Vendetta Two. Uh huh. I liked him a lot, and I kind of wanted to do it. It was kind of test the waters, and people loved him. So I was like, oh, I definitely have to do the artillery book too. Oh, I'm so and glad I, you going, did. Going forward, I want to do. Obviously, I want to get to doing new Vendetta stories at some point. Uh, I'll talk more about that some other time. But Whoa. Yes, that I would want be amazing. To definitely include artillery in the universe, maybe as a backup feature or maybe a supporting character yeah. in the story. I'm still working out the details. but Obviously, uh, shout out to Comic Clear. I got my uh, a copy of uh, Artillery on my Comic Clear uh, boards. The, they make the wonderful clear backing boards, so you can see this killer awesome back cover which we did also appropriate for the back of the trade paperback which i do love too because then you kind of get artillery in the back and you get vendetta on the front you know i think that kind of worked out quite nicely um and and comic clear i'll just say too great product i bought them too you did yes oh. i did i bought a bunch of the clear backer boards um for you know my nicer books and stuff sweet and they're great they're, they're awesome great. Somehow it took 80 years for someone to come up with that. Um, <clears throat> for uh, yeah. 80 years to think of that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. I, I'm, sure, I'm not getting paid to say that. I just think they're a good product. And good I'm stuff. not either. I mean, he sent me a couple boxes of free ones once upon a time. And now I just love, I mean, literally all of my comics, all my golden age, all my silver age, everything is comic clear. I'm, I'm comic clear only now. So I'm just a fan. So uh, shout out to them. I actually got a chance to chill with them out in Heroes Con too, uh, down in Charlotte because they had a booth out there and everything. It was super cool. Um, so anyway, back to artillery. Uh, so let's take a look at this man. Um, open it right up. Here we go. Oh, you're following along. Terrific. <clears throat> And I think this is the copy you sent me. So once we finally got in touch through Jeff Miller, I bought this from you and you signed it, which was awesome. Um, and yeah, 95, there it is, Artillery One Shot. And then, of course, right off the top, you're it, you're uh, dedicating the issue uh, to uh, POWs, man. Um, any any particular personal connection to to that or, 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 or what was the reasoning behind that? I just wanted it to, to be respectful and to be authentic or genuine, I guess is the better word. I'm not a veteran myself, so I I, right. I can't say anything for myself. My dad was a veteran. Right. He, he, he was in the Korea, Korean War. Wow. Um, but I just thought it would be something respectful. It's he's a military character. Right. And breaks away from the military. And I didn't want people to think I'm some sort of... Right. You know, um, pro desertion or 
some exactly. sort of yeah 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 exactly. no I, and, and and that's and, and that's good because you know like yeah because uh, what we're going to get into it here the, the 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 story of artillery is about him leaving war after what happens to his father and stuff yep. so um we'll definitely get so I, that always jumped out to me that was that was pretty cool um but of course your dad being a veteran too and i know that your dad's you know plays a big part in your comics origin story as well too so i think it kind of is a nice tie into that whole thing as well right yeah for sure thank you yeah because yeah. i wanted i wanted to, to salute the troops and yeah. with my dad too I, it was he was in my mind as i was working on these two i just thought it was a nice touch and uh shout out to my good buddy uh uh i i, I won't use his real name but um <laughs> uh give him a sir, give him a code name yeah um <laughs> sir rocks a lot okay <laughs> he, he's a uh veteran he's a guy i work with through the stagehand union oh and, cool uh, yeah he, he was in the army and he loved this book and said dude i thought you did a good job oh Respectful. cool so that 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 meant a lot getting his blessing oh cool that's awesome <clears throat> well let's get into it um obviously i wanted to also quickly mention like based upon this cover based upon this opening page like this is 1995 it's hard to sort of ignore like frank miller and it's hard to ignore image comics maybe a little bit what what were you sort of responding to aesthetic wise in comics in 95 that maybe was an influence here yeah, all of it. I, I was I was spending like my whole paycheck, pretty much on comics so that I could afford once I paid my bills and my rent and food and whatever. And I, yeah, I was soaking it in like Frank Miller, Image, DC, all the independent stuff. You know, everything from Turtles and Warlock oh, yeah. Five to Warlock Jim Five. Vigil to everything. There it um, is. Originally, because it was '90s, you know. What I my first plan was I was gonna do it was gonna be another black cover outside of this. Oh. And I was gonna do just the logo, the number and the price. Yeah. And cut holes with a drill press for a three hole press. That would so been the cool. whole front would have been black of all bullet holes. And you'd see pieces of the art and his face underneath. And then you open the black cover, and then you'd have the color cover. That would have been very '90s speculator, like speculate speculator market, you know, <laughs> yeah. of that time to do yep. that. I mean, Image did that, you know. You, you would see that, or like a foil treatment, or like totally. you know, some sort of. That's cool. That would have been cool. That's a great idea. Wow, perfect. It, it, um, just, it was so cost prohibitive. That I was going to do metallic paint, all right. black paper. It was like right. ah, just. It got it got ridiculous. I was like, let me just make the book. <laughs> right. <laughs> it still looks it still it still looks killer. So, um, all right. So let's um, let's uh, let's get into the story here. We are uh, twelve miles south of Omega City, uh, <laughs> right on the streets of Iron Ridge, New York. I love that. <laughs> love it. Um, and um, so, is that the universe of Vendetta? Is that is that the same setting? Yeah, it is. Right. Yeah, you know. Yep, Omega City, that's, that's where Vendetta right. is. Right. And so I kind of placed it within the realm of New York, but doesn't necessarily mean Vendetta's right. in New York. Right. And then I just thought the name Iron Ridge sounded cool, like yeah. work class steel worker. Yeah. Kind of, you know, because yeah. artillery is a very street kind of character. Totally. You should see what apartments are going for now in Iron Ridge, man. It's crazy. With the... <laughs> um, so... Um, here we have uh, obviously this kind of um, drifter character here in his kind of duster and hat, you know, very <laughs> of that time period, um, walking up to an ATM, which I love. I love how we're getting an ATM scene right off the bat. And he's taking out some money. He's low on funds. But then, of course, there seems to be someone here. And we le later learn this is Vendetta. Uh, uh, sorry, not Vendetta. Artillery dressed up here uh, in this garb. But then someone uh, here is going to stick him up. And hold him up for his cash. And then, of course, uh, he says, uh, wrong, cockroach, you know. And then uh, we, we flip back here, and then that's when artillery whips out his uh, insane gun here <laughs> towards yeah. the thug. Yep. Most and unrealistic guns, but they, they, they hey, look cool. Hey, that's, that's that era, man. I mean, 
we all we all had the fixations for that back in the mid 90s um especially in comics too you saw it everywhere like the guns that cable would have you know in in x-men and stuff they were just so impractical but and lo- they were bigger than his freaking head you know and it was yeah uh, amazing yeah, this, a lot of people are i think are uh um bigger offenders than i am <laughs> yes oh yes totally <laughs> totally uh so we have this here and it looks like was this typed on here this is kind of the first sort of typed on lettering i'm seeing or am i am i wrong yeah so, yeah you're right yeah you're right yeah. i guess maybe because i wanted to do the lettering big yeah i thought to get it nice and big and consistent i did rub off letters yeah there but the, is, re- yeah. the rest of it is the hand lettering right right so this is a gun, and there's our first shot of artillery. <laughs> and then five, four, three, he uh, counts down to him, but then he lets the guy escape. But then we have Soldier of Misfortune Man is the uh, title of this ish. And your awesome signature down there. So it's a good, nice little dramatic opening uh, to the character. Dig it. Of course, love you know how you always incorporate the logo of each character, too. Everyone's got to get their own metal band logo. Yeah. <laughs> um so then here's artillery sitting and he's sort of um talking about <clears throat> how uh his this is <laughs> he's kind of reminiscing on how he should have cared better for his father after his mother passed away from a car accident but he was too busy uh uh burying himself in comic books and punk records love it <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so killer but that's good because that ties to the ridiculous mohawk it's a nice shout out that you made a connection to the fact that he might be a punk himself you know exactly yeah yeah which i love i love that um so then we flash into him in the military service so artillery is now flashing back to his time in the military i guess peeling potatoes (laughs) which is amazing (laughs) and then uh his drill sergeant is informing him that he's got to go see what the general for uh, some mm-hmm. sort of news update uh, yep. about his about his father and uh so then of course young artillery is brought before uh the general here where he explains that his father has been killed right in the in in, in the service and um and uh, well, that's he's, when he's, he's he's considered uh, MIA right and, you know, it's um it's it's an election year oh. and so you know, politically, it's 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 something they're just going to not touch and leave behind. And right. so, obviously, you know, artillery, you know, believes that his father's still alive and wants to find him. Right, 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 exactly. And so, and then that also gives him this sort of, you know, uh, journey, you know, with the character because he's going to leave the military uh, because, you know, he feels that, you know, his his uh, his father is just another number in this equation of mm-hmm. folks who also perished in some operation. And so that sort of provokes him to leave. And it says here that he's gone AWOL. Now we're flashing back to the present. And he says he's technically AWOL and he has to avoid the military police, which is which is cool. It gives some stakes urgency mm-hmm. to what's going on. Um, and then uh, uh, but then uh, he's startled here by a sound. And then we have an introduction of another hero character. You want to tell us about uh, G Force? <laughs> yeah. So this is um, I'm starting to like put the pieces in for Crowbar Nine. Right. <laughs> That's so right. G Force is he's known as TV's astronaut. So he was one of the not the first men in space, but one of the guys to get sort of famous from it, and came back to Earth with powers. And he's a little bit of a jerk. He's a, he's kind of conceited. He's kind of full of himself. He's he's you know kind of a chauvinist. Um, and I just thought he was like a cool character, you know, like this guy's so powerful and he's arrogant and he's famous and good looking and on TV and <laughs> I love that, you know, <laughs> yeah. And so I'm starting to piece together the the team of the crow of the nine. Yeah, uh, and we should say for the people that don't know, Crowbar Nine is sort of your superhero faction. Uh, series that you also did what after this right that's what you did after this yeah um after this was the nick noise right tour book. right so there's a whole issue with nick noise right um love that there too way. yep and then i did crowbar nine after that um right. started the first two issues and never got to finish number three and more on that later at the end of the show we'll talk a little bit more about crowbar nine um 
But yeah, so then uh, G Force comes in. Also, love how um, <laughs> you see artillery dissing him here, saying, "Listen, G String." I uh, <laughs> love that. Uh, <laughs> that made me laugh. Um, but basically, G Force is talking about you know what's going on in, in in this part of the world. A lot of criminals, a lot of drugs, a lot of gun running. It's bad out in the streets, and maybe we should partner up to take care of it, right? And and G Force sees artillery as a loose cannon. Right. Right. So artillery sees G Force as, as kind of a stiff and, and kind of a jerk. Uh, and G Force is very kind of straight by the book. So he sees, you know, artillery is kind of, you know, too extreme, too violent, you know, right. come back to Earth. Right. And he sort of says to him, too, he's like, you know, like you're you're no better than the criminals that you're that that you know that are here and that you're there's probably one degree of separation or the lines are pretty blurred between both you know yep. that sort of vigilante dichotomy thing um i like touching on that like where do you draw the line you know where do you draw the line yeah yeah do you turn right. them over to the police do you do, do you do you kill them do you put them in your own jail i mean <laughs> you know right right so then so then they sort of separate there and then, um, so then what's happening here? He basically, he, he goes in and he sees the, he goes back to, um, to the military, to the to military base. Right. Right. See, he's trying to find any information or if there's any documents he can find on his father. Love that. But he, but he doesn't get a chance to, because he sees, uh, a truck breaking through the doors and then breaking yeah, down, right. uh, breaking out of the gates. Yeah. Bam. That's great. Great page. All right. Yep. Here's a great shot here. Now, oh, I love that. Breaking through the steel fence and breaking through the gates. Love that. Nice, like low worms eye view up, looking up at the truck coming out. Yeah, that's killer. I love that. Um, and then we see uh, him thinking those boys are in a big hurry to get somewhere, and I doubt the army has changed enough to to allow long hair on men <laughs> and destruction of military property. Sorry, Dad, but my inquiry on you will have to wait. So then he's going to investigate here what's going on to see yep. what's happening. Then we flash to... Is this from Vendetta 4? No, but this tie... This, it, um, oh, it's it's again tie. Uh, there, was, there was a piece in Vendetta 4 where it showed Slate falling off the girders. Right. It was like a construction accident. And right. It was kind of left a little vague as to what happened. So this is where you see what happens. Oh, I um, love that. And it ties to Vendetta 4. It shows all the construction workers and the men pouring out the cement mixer to get yes. John Slate Slater out of the, the mix and save him from drowning. And right. then he rises up out of the cement. And then he, he suddenly becomes, becomes the Slate, man of the, living cement. The man of living, living cement. So this has obviously got to be some Sandman sort of homage yeah. I'm guessing here. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I guess that's probably the, the closest thing I can think of. I forget what else I was thinking of. Might have been like the symbiotes or something like that. At the uh, that probably is more accurate. Yeah. For the time. Sam is, of, yeah. For living sure. cement. It was like kind of, I just thought it was a cool idea. And so again, here's, you know, number two for the crowbar nine. Right. Exactly. And what's cool about, uh, about Slate too, and this, and even just including this in your own universe, is that right here you're plugging that Slate's going to come later. More Slate to come when we get to the Crowbar Nine series. So you're planting these little seeds for all the different ways that your own sort of universe is going to collide with each other. These different characters, which is super cool, you know. Yeah, it's 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 pretty gutsy looking back at it now, like. Who knows if you're going to finish this book or the next one, but I was already planning several books ahead and getting that done and, you know, laying out the groundwork. So, right. No, it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, so then we have here another character that we're introducing, uh, bone saw, if I remember correctly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, so where are we here? Are we back to the military base now? Yes. No, he pulls into, there's an abandoned garage. Okay. So yeah, he, that's right. He's, he's, yeah. he put a, a, um, a grappling hook on the truck. So he's on the roof of the truck. That's right. They go back to this abandoned warehouse and there's a bunch of thugs and gun runners and outlaws Amazing. and, uh, and bone saws there. He's, 
not the not the brains, but he's the leader because he's the strongest and the toughest. <laughs> right. Outfitted with all sorts of weaponry. He's got the saw on his arm. He's got, yeah. you know, this amazing mask. I love that mask, too, by the way. It's great. Um, and so then uh, Bonesaw say, Bonesaw say, do as told. And he speaks like that, which is amazing. And so then uh, they're basically off, but then artillery busts in, right, to this to this group of group. Of he's, he's actually, he's spying on them. He's, he's, he's uh, outside the door. Yeah. And then... He knocks over a bucket. He's like, you can hear, see the clang and panel yeah. number three. <laughs> yeah. And then everyone's like, what's that outside the truck? Yeah, that's right. Hey, who the, nobody crosses the Lords. You're dead meat, man. So the Lords. Gets... Yeah. So he, he jumps in and, and takes the truck. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's cool too, that you also <clears throat> mentioned here to start shout out here. It also ties back to vendetta number two. When um, Lord Leviathan and Vendetta had that battle, uh, you know, uh, in issue number two, and then he kind of references his leg still hurting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from that. Yeah, which is fun too. So yeah, then, yeah, so that's I right. Try yeah. to tie as, and be as consistent as I can, you know, for its universe. Exactly. So it's cool. So then, artillery busts in, get into a gun battle here with the lords. Um, well, I hope you guys are vegetarians because this piece of dead meat just flew the coop. <laughs> it's awesome and then yeah love this I'm writing love the dialogue this. on these yeah it's great stop him aim for the tires shoot them out don't worry so he's, he's not going yeah so he's going takes off down the uh, down the ramp there at the edge of a dock blows out the tires you can see the the truck scree screeching going up in the air it's great sploosh yeah landing nice. on its side in the water and then suddenly, crack a boosh, giant explosion. Truck is gone, and they're like, they think that he's just another psychopath uh, who killed himself to to stop what they did. And then, right. if you look underneath, on the corner under the dock, you can see artillery's oh. face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna bring that a little closer. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it'll focus on that, but yeah, he's just chilling down there. Love that. <laughs> oh yeah, then here we go. Got to have the big time splash, the pin up <laughs> here. <laughs> Love that. That's great. Um, but first, before we get to that, the following night, vehicles begin to gather outside the gang's designated meeting spot. The Lords, I'm guessing. Um, things aren't going smoothly. Uh, Let's see. I'm just. Oh, oh, so then we're introduced to another gang that they're talking about, the Dark Disciples, right? Yep. Yep. And that. And that they're makes coming, uh, they're there to buy the guns off the the lords, awesome. and uh, they think that something's wrong or something's going. You know, they're being shortchanged, so that ticks Bonesaw off right away because you know he's got a pretty short fuse, right? You know, and so yep. he's ready to start fighting, and they're like, "Hold it, stop! Bonesaw, Bonesaw, show who was stupid. Bonesaw, come down. We didn't come here to fight, right? You didn't. That's great. So yep. artillery busts in on both of them." That's right. <laughs> it's it's the Mohawk. Get him. That's what they call him. <laughs> and then the Mohawk, didn't you t did you tell you my name was Artillery? So that's when he's kind of saying, he's proclaiming his name there, I'm guessing, for the first time. Uh, but you lowlifes can call me a reason to regret being born Blitzkrieg. <laughs> and then, um, yep, that's awesome. And then he's just blazing away here. Lots of speed lines and lightning and bullets Everything. for that one. Everything, yeah. <laughs> Everything. Love it. Um, this is awesome too. You see this a lot in the issues he's in a vendetta that, that sort of profile, uh, uh, using this top two pages here, which is super, super cool. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this, these are probably my two favorite pages out of the book. Oh yeah, totally. It's great. I love it. I love how you're dividing this too. It helps with the action. Yeah. So you see, you know, it's easy to follow what, where you're reading. It goes across the top totally. and then, you know, the panels go down across the bottom totally yeah it's awesome so it's he fires dangerous. his way through knocks all these guys out mm -hmm. someone tries to sneak up behind him behind the crates yeah he ducks takes him out and he shoots the other guy right oh i love that too just a big chunk out of the out of the head yeah <laughs> <laughs> love that and then of course we're about to see the confrontation between these two yeah and then signature mccardle here got to flip the book <laughs> 
Was there something that like you like? Did you see that in a comic and you kind of borrowed that, or was that kind of your own? Where did you first see the sort of? Was that something that was utilized a lot in the nineties? The sort of switch? Not really, I I think I saw it somewhere. I must have. Pro- I'm sure someone did it, and I saw it. Got it. And I just thought it like it's just another way to use the paper, and like get it. Just totally. Instead of the same. This way, if you turn it, you get like a whole different sort of um, shape to play with for for storytelling. I just thought it was a cool idea. And totally. if you do a double page spread, you can do like a nice kind of little poster. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know. Yeah, it's killer. So then we got Bone Saw here showing showing his uh, his blade here. Uh, die tall hair. Raw. He's not <laughs> articulate, but he is dangerous. Also, uh, he he's also. Uh, ten snacks short of a picnic. Oh yeah, there you go. Ten <laughs> snacks short of a picnic. Sorry, bone saw. Uh, but uh, there's more to fighting than brute. And then so we cut down here. Gets him from behind. So yep. now bone saw has the upper hand, and you can see the gang all cha- chanting, "Bone saw, bone yeah, saw." Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's you know, awesome. Yeah. And he's got the blade right above his neck. And that was, uh, wasn't that Macho Man Randy Savage's name in the Spider-Man movie? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was. And, everyone, and, and then everybody is chanting, boom, saw, you know, like. I, yeah. I swear that, you know, Marvel <laughs> Comics, uh, uh, um, Sam Raimi. Yeah. I, I want my cut. That was, that yeah. was my idea. They, <laughs> they need your royalties us. there. <laughs> yeah. They took this from me. Yep. No, it can't end like this, sliced up like a holiday ham. Come on, West, <laughs> you can do it. You can. So then the struggle. And then, of course, we see the blade going back into Bonesaw's face. I mean, that's great. I got to get a little closer in on that. And um, it's a high fly ball to the center field. Artillery one. Bonesaw zero. Now that I've (laughs) quieted this monosyllabic moron, let's see. And then, of course, we hear another great pose. Who else, who else we have who wants to play? One of you slugs already uh, tried sneaking up on me. Don't think it'll happen now uh, again. And then this is great here. I'm not very good in a very good mood, so I'm only going to say this once. Who's ready to surrender? And who's ready to get shipped home in a box? Screw this. And then everyone's like, <laughs> we give up. It ain't worth it. <laughs> so then these guys start running. I like the I guy. Know. It's like, I've done time before. It's not that bad. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get ready to go to awesome. gym and have to face artillery. On. Like, they just right. all give up and put their guns down. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> hey, this guy's yeah. nuts, you know? Exactly. And so then he makes them hand over all their weapons, right? Yep. Yep. And then that's it. End of the arms deal. And then yep. here we are. The cops know nothing about the stolen arsenal. Does that mean that the military is involved? A cover-up? Uh, I'll drop this truck off at base. And then um, after I've thoroughly searched for any information on my father, I've had to sacrifice the other truck with the concussion bombs to ensure my escape. But hey, uh, one out of two ain't bad. And then boom! Big explosion at the base. Uh, so everything's basically... destroyed. Any evidence that could have been in that building, any any links to whether it was his father or to Bonesaw or to the gang, the lords, the the gun running, it's all gone now. Damn. And then he says, "There's the base up ahead. I'll turn off the road and stash the truck in." What? And then um, boom, as he said, "Love this. this is a great drawing. Love this." You can see the reflection in the windshield of the the, yeah. the building burning. Right. right, and that's hard to do. Yeah, that's cool. I dig that. And then, of course, we have here the ending splash page, right? Yep. Yep. Um, th- the the grave of his father. And then uh, I'll I'll just read this because it's probably this is the last part here. The base was completely destroyed. Most likely, someone didn't want their trail followed, and in the process, erased any trail. Uh, sorry, <laughs> any trail to my father. I don't know if you've approved of my actions, but I hope you could understand and could respect them if you were here. I'll never stop searching, no matter what. Maybe I'm not untarnished like you, but I fight for what I believe is right and never worry about the risks. I became artillery because you gave me strength and drive uh, and drive to be a great soldier. There's just too many soldiers and not enough worthy leaders. That's why I must do what I do. My life has become a tribute to your legend. I hope you know that. The military's lack of respect means nothing as long as I can draw uh, breath. Uh, I can draw 
breath. As <clears throat> you are alive in my memory, Father, and there you will live forever as the greatest, most selfless man I've ever known, an inspiration and an unsung hero. I love you. Wow. Touching words there from artillery. The end for now. So that's it. So that's it. <clears throat> yep. For now. For now. <laughs> and I guess that's a good segue to ask for now. Is there any, is the, it, will we see any more? Well, I, that's, I, I want to, ret- I want to return to, uh, you know, long-term is to um, do new vendetta and yeah. obviously artillery is in that universe. So I want to maybe either do backup stories with artillery or yeah. maybe just have him guest with that's cool vendetta again um like a tales from asgard kind of thing yeah. like in the back that'd be cool yep. i could see yep. that exactly exactly yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yep so then here you are back with another first issue no letters to print yet so let me fill in on what's been happening at red bullet studios as you know this issue is a self-contained one shot yet it is also a bridge connecting the vendetta holy vindicator mini series with next year's crowbar nine series G-Force and Slate, who debuted in this issue, will be appearing, as well as the triumphant return of Vendetta. This three-issue series is going to be crammed with new characters, places, and concepts. Look for the first issue of Crowbar 9 in early 96. If you still haven't uh, checked out the Vendetta books, do yourself and your comic collection a favor and add something new, original, and different to all those Marvels and DCs. You won't be disappointed. Um, and then, it, then you go on to say that it's, you can get it through Capital City, Sticks, Multibook, New Age, and Legacy. If your retailer doesn't carry Red Bullet comics, tell him or her you would like them available to you and contact one of the distributors listed. Uh, in today's tough ec- ec- economy, most retailers can't afford to order new titles unless they can f- plan on selling them. So please speak up about the titles you really enjoy. So, yeah. Um, and then you kind of go on to say you're trying to share the stories of the new world and hope that you'll be here to join me. I want to say a little more, but I won't, but time won't allow it. So I want to close this by saying thank you and everyone who has shown their support and please write me at the above address with your comments and suggestions. Peace. And I'll see you next time around. So that's cool. And then obviously ads for the vendetta books, shirts that I wish were still around. And um, yeah, awesome stuff, man. There you have it. Artillery number one. That's great. Great little self-contained little mini story there, packed with action, super cool, and now of course immortalized in the brand new Vendetta Holy Vindicator trade paperback. It's cool because you get to see the the original art to the cover too, right? Yeah, yeah, kind of blown out a little bit more in black and white. Get to see this kind of in all of its glory, and then yeah, reprinted here the full story. So awesome stuff, Steve. And um, before we let the people go, we should talk. Real quick about Crowbar 9, um, because I am lucky enough to own issue number one and two of Crowbar 9. Get a load of these. So these were done after you did Nick Noise and you went into doing starting a fresh new three-part series. Uh, as I said, it's your superhero faction, but you stopped at issue number two, right? Well, I just I had started number three, oh. but um, I just never had the time to finish it. Mm. And um, but but that's going to change, right? That has changed. <laughs> All right. Three is finished. That's right. All right. So we're announcing it here. Uh, 20 something, 24 years, 22 years. Wow. Crowbar wow, that... nine. Number three sat unfinished on my shelf collecting dust. Um, wow. And thanks. Thanks to you, Evan, and thanks to Jason and Floating World, and you know, uh, giving my stuff a new audience. I was like, I, I have to dig that out. I have to, I have to finish that trilogy. That's it's. I, I have to finish Crowbar Nine. I meant to finish this. I've been meaning to do it for all these years, and I got sidetracked with all these other things. So Crowbar Nine number three is now finished. Love it, and I love these wraparound covers too. But yeah, that is huge news. That you are finally now, after a few decades, finishing this trilogy, and we talked to Jason at Floating World, uh, you know, who uh, published the Vendetta uh, trade paperback, and now we are working on uh, doing a release for Crowbar, so people can actually now finally read. These are actually pretty scarce issues to come by, but also um, can read the full story and and sort of check it out. But did did you want to share any um, 
other pieces you may have here. L let me make your screen a little bigger so the folks at home can actually see it. Um, a couple of uh, just little tastes. These are some bonus pages that'll be, it's going to be an 80 page giant. So oh, instead of publishing love that. three separate books and making people buy three separate issues, giant size, 80 page special. And this is some character files. Whoa, that's awesome. Love it. So you can see uh, the character designs that I drew and then their name, identity, description. Got to have those. Got to have those. Character bios are very important. One of these here. Wow. And these are all recent finishings that you've done, things that you've recently yeah. finished? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I finished these up within the last couple of weeks. And then Crowbar number two, you notice, is done by um, Frankie Washington who's a local right. artist. I, just, I met him and I loved his art style. And so I let him draw the cover to number two. And looking back, I was like, I should have my own art yeah. for the second issue for this giant size. Oh yeah. 100%. So this is the first, nobody's ever seen this before. Whoa. Frame that up. Yeah. Wow. That's killer. Oh, I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. So that'll be the new artwork for issue two. Yep. And so you're going to get another wow. wraparound cover, color wraparound cover, like the f issue number one. I did a new lettering for uh, hand lettering says 80 page giant. Uh, Jason's going to drop that in. Oh, cool. All three issues plus bonus pages. Uh, plus I got a double page commission by a super surprise artist. Oh, okay. Um, his name, but you all know who he is, and uh, he's he's great. All right. Well, we'll leave it at that. Uh, you heard it here first, guys. Uh, we are working on that's right the eighty page giant for uh, Crowbar Nine, Steve McArdle's Crowbar Nine, second release of yours on the Power Comics Floating World line. We can't wait for that, um, guys. If you haven't yet picked up your copy of Holy uh, Vendetta, Holy Vindicator. Uh, on Floating World, please go out and do so. This book is killer. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into this. Best way to support Power Comics. Best way, obviously, to support Steve and uh, this new line of Wicked Comics that we're going to be putting out. So please uh, hop on there and, and grab this. 40 bucks for the Vendetta uh, trade paperback plus the book plate. Uh, or I believe, Steve, is it 25 That's right, 25 for the regular edition if you want to uh, just get the book. Uh, but either way, uh, that helps uh, support all of us here. And so we really um, appreciate that. Steve, any final words um, you want to share with the people? Boy, just thank you so much, everybody. The response so far has been just unbelievably positive. It's been so great. And, man, like, like I said before, I'm just so, like, bowled over and, and so happy that people are reading them again after all these years, that people are enjoying it and and – you know, all the, you know, years of work and time I put into all these pages of art and stories that people get to enjoy them again, you know? I mean, so, dude, like, before I forget, Evan, I owe you the, the biggest debt of gratitude. You and Jason, mm -hmm. honestly, man, thank you guys so much. My pleasure. This wouldn't happen, this wouldn't happen without you. Oh, I uh, appreciate it. Jeff Miller is in the circle of, of yes. comic gods as well. Yes. But you guys, man, you guys made this happen. Every time... Every time I talk to you, I want to thank you again. And, oh, and our pleasure, honestly. Steve. I, totally our pleasure. Uh, thank you for allowing us to do it. I mean, it was it's so cool to like dream up like can can Power Comics actually can we publish and print stuff again and you know or, or, or in the first place and like can we actually do that and it's been a dream come true for us just to it's be so curators awesome. of this stuff. So it's I definitely so appreciate awesome. you letting us do it too. You know, I really appreciate that. So um, and, and all the books that you publish that I don't have, I'll be buying. <laughs> you know, Lance Stanton, that's in my collection already. <laughs> oh, yeah. All the great stuff. I love it. I'm a fan, too. So now that you mention it, we got we got tons of copies of Lance Stanton out there in the wild, too. So head out to your LCS and grab those or grab them also on floatingworldcomics.com. But uh, all right, Steve, I'm going to let you go. Uh, thank you so much. Hope you all enjoyed Artillery. And uh, we'll have you back, Steve, to go through the Crowbar 9 series. You know, we got to do that. So we'll definitely have you back soon. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a great rest of your week. Take care. Thank Bye. you. All the best. Bye.